and welcome to The Sherlock Show. I'm Georgie Courage Cole and I'm here with a very exciting show today. It's a wedding special. The wedding industry, not to mention brides-to-be, have had a pretty tough time over the last year. So we thought it needed a bit of love and celebration and that we share a bit of inspiration for when the industry is back up and running. So from fashion to beauty to tablescaping to flowers, we are covering it today. First, celebrated wedding planner Sarah Hayward is sharing some unmissable tips and advice from the first thing you should do when you get engaged to the three most common mistakes to avoid. Luxury tableware company Maison Margot will be talking us through three beautiful tablescapes, perfect if you need some inspiration for entertaining. And later, makeup artist Hannah Martin, who has painted the faces of more celebrity brides and royals than anyone has created three very different beauty looks to replicate on your big day. Plus Sherlock's favorite, the ultra cool florist, Ronnie Colby, is giving us his take on what's hot in flowers in 2021. Finally, Charlotte Collins, Sherlock's senior fashion and weddings editor, is sharing some serious gems from new bridal wear designers to the must have bridal accessory. You don't wanna miss it. So let's get started. And first is Sarah Hayward with some must have advice. Hello Sherlux, I'm Sarah Hayward, I'm a wedding planner and from our offices in London's Notting Hill, my team and I plan weddings and parties, fabulous weddings and parties throughout the globe and today we're going to answer your questions on everything related to weddings and wedding planning. So let's get going. It's still uncertain how the rest of 2021 is going to pan out. So what you really need to decide is, do you need that certainty as to what your wedding is going to look like, how many guests, whether there will be restrictions? If you are anxious to get married this year, then you can, but I would say be prepared to be flexible. Flexible on guest numbers, flexible on what might or might not be allowed in a wedding. Ideally, when you're planning a wedding, you do need around nine to 12 months. First of all, you need to think about where you're going to get married, when you're going to get married, who might be there, how much money are you going to spend? And there's really not a lot of point in thinking through what your day will look like until you're really sure about some key things, like how many people are going to be there, because there's no point going venue shopping, finding a venue that you love, and then realizing once you've booked it, that it's either too small or too large for the guest numbers that ideally suit you. Similarly with budget, we really do need to have an idea of how much money you're willing to spend on your wedding, because you could get yourself tied into things that are either inappropriate or too expensive very early on, that then limit what you've got to spend later on, on things like flowers, design, food, and entertainment. When thinking through planning your day, really think about what you're trying to achieve in terms of how it will feel for a guest. So think through all the five senses because a great wedding touches all five of them. So throughout the occasion, how will your guests feel? What will it look like? What will it smell like? What will they hear? What's the soundtrack to the day? Ultimately, what will they taste when they eat? and think about all these things throughout the entire event. Is really focusing just on what an event is going to look like, because you can actually plan the most beautiful event. It can look stunning, but if guests don't feel looked after, if they don't feel that you've cared about the experience that they have, it could backfire on you. A tip when looking at designing your ceremony is this is the one time where you know where everybody's looking. They're all facing forwards and they're also not in there very long. So when balancing your budget, start thinking about spending on the areas where people will be spending most of the time. Is people not budgeting up front and running out of money? And of course, when you start wedding planning, you will realize that the things that you spend money on first are things like your venue, your photographer, your videographer, hairdresser, makeup artist, all these things. And that really starts to fast eat into your budget. And if you've laid out a huge amount of money on say a venue, a really luxurious venue that's a high cost, and actually the rest of your budget isn't gonna meet that, then you're going to find that when you've bought all those essential things, 
There's not a lot left for flowers and design. I always feel that the only thing you're left with after the wedding, apart from a spouse, is the memories. And those memories are really captured for you by the photography and the videography. So I would never skimp on what I call the memory makers, because when you look back on those photographs and you look back on your wedding film, it will spark those memories. So don't skimp on that. A really successful wedding is all about the people. It's about how you made your guests feel, how welcoming you were, how all-encompassing you were. Did they feel that this was a really special celebration of your love? Part of that is about curating a guest list that's the people that you really want to be there. And the right people in the room won't mind what it looks like. They won't be looking for you to impress them they will be looking for you to embrace them celebrating in your special day. That said, we all want a day that's a little bit more special and looks a little bit more special than our ordinary everyday life. So ways that you can make your budget go that little bit further. Of course, think about the guest numbers and know the price per head for guest numbers. But be thinking about using locally sourced seasonal flowers. Less travel means less money to get them to you. Think about the food that you're eating. Again, seasonal food that is grown locally. At the moment, and for obvious reasons, many couples marrying are planning much smaller celebrations, but you don't have to skimp on the details just because the event is smaller. Indeed, you could probably go more all out on things like fabulous food, wonderful wines, and smaller intimate celebrations also afford the opportunity to really personalise the experience. Small touches that could really make the event feel different. Perhaps writing a note inside the order of service, individual handwritten notes for each guest. Tell them why they're important to you and why they're there. Happy guests, a relaxed couple and a meticulously planned day because if it's well planned, guests will feel well looked after, the bride and groom will feel relaxed, and it will all flow in a way that makes people feel that what's important is what's at the heart of this, which is the commitment. So, number one is money management. Only plan for the type of wedding you can afford. Be organized, it sounds really obvious, but being organised really is the key to successful and stress-free wedding planning. Prioritise. This is a really important one. Don't waste time getting carried away with the detail of the day when you first start wedding planning. Prioritise your key areas of spending, the things that are important to you. Focus on those things and then fill in the detail of the rest of the day. Present a united front. Create your day together listen, compromise, but ensure that your day is the one that you want together. That's your starting point. What do the two of you want? Delegate. Behind every blooming bride and gorgeous groom is a fabulous and efficient team. When you're thinking about who's going to be in the wedding party, who's going to be your best man, who's going to be your matron of honour, are these people reliable, sensible, trustworthy people? Are they going to assist you? If they're not, you might want to consider giving them something else to do, perhaps a reading during the ceremony, because the people that you put around you need to take away some of the stress and aggravation so that you can really enjoy not only the planning, but the day itself. Hiring and firing. Don't hire anyone or anything until you've seen or sampled their service or product and get every detail in writing, ensuring taxes, and service are included. This is really important. If you haven't noticed that, for example, your wedding meal doesn't include VAT and doesn't include a service charge, you can have a really nasty shock when the final account arrives and it's 25% more than you thought it was going to be. Always, always read the small print and make sure you understand what's included. Keep cool, calm and collected 
and don't alienate anyone you might need later on down the line. And particularly those couples who don't have the benefit of a wedding planner and who are doing everything themselves. When you're trying to plan a wedding, which for me is a full-time job and takes hundreds of hours for every event, it can get really overwhelming and really stressful. So try not to take it out on anyone you're gonna need later on. My final tip for wedding planning and those months leading up to your wedding. I suggest have a wedding free zone in your home. So that's somewhere one, where one of you can go, particularly if you're already living together, where if you're in that room, it means you do not want to talk about the wedding planning because sometimes you all just need to take a little bit of a break. And in the days where we are going to be allowed to go out and, and celebrate of an evening, go out on date nights, have a night once a week, maybe you're just going out for a pizza, and agree not to talk about the wedding. And then you'll remember why you're doing this in the first place. Thank you, Sarah, that was brilliant. I'm sure you'll all agree. Next today, makeup artist Hannah Martin will be showing us three different bridal looks from an English rose to bronze goddess to an understated evening look, all using Armani beauty products. Pay particular attention to Armani's iconic luminous Silk Foundation, the pros say there really is nothing like it to achieve the perfect base. But first, Louisa Prescott Mobs, co-founder of luxury tableware company Maison Margot, is here with a curated edit of inspirational, beautiful place settings that would be perfect for any wedding, no matter the size. Hi, I'm Louisa from Maison Margot. We are a luxury homeware brand selling everything from beautiful linens to glassware, tableware, and everything you need for the ultimate hosting experience. Today I'm going to talk to you about three summer wedding trends. Doesn't matter how small, how large, where your wedding might be, um, these styles will work for everybody um, and there's something for everyone. So our first look, we've taken a classic white and gold and given it a bit of a twist with a patterned blue and white backdrop. Pattern is a big summer trend again this year and we absolutely love this blue and white um, swirly linen. We've then added um, an illustrated menu, again, another trend for this summer. These ones are stunning. They are by Susanna Garrard. Um, and we've used slightly muted pinks and greens just to make it not so blue and white. Classic cream roses, you can't go wrong. These are from Rob Van Helden and they are absolutely stunning. We've added very contemporary slim um, gold cutlery and crystal cut glassware. Finally, um, a big trend this year has been these Italian swirl candles. They're one of our best sellers. We've added them in pale, gray, and blue, um, just to add a little bit of interest to the table and move away from that traditional candelabra look. Our second look is really sweet and romantic and uh, one of our favorites. It's very feminine, um, pale pinks and golds. Um, the first thing we've done is actually use this bamboo cutlery. This is a very big trend for the summer again. Um, and another one of our best sellers. We have paired it with these beautiful, quite rustic, very, very pale pink plates that are lined in a kind of dusty gold um, that we love. This very sweet scallop edged napkin um, from Portugal is a really pretty feminine touch. And then you may not be able to see, but in the close up image, we've used this gorgeous wicker placemat. It's a pink flower. Um, again, very pretty and elegant. Little scallop edged pink, a pinch pot, sorry, to, um, to accent the napkin. And then of course, um, our lovely pink swirl candles. Again, gorgeous romantic florals from Rob Van Helden um, and a very, very sweet menu from Susanna Garrett, um, illustrated with birds and pink peonies. Our third look today has been inspired by the south of France, which is where I actually got married. And I love this colour palette. It's um, very fresh, very clean, um, but very, very elegant. Uh, we started with a white washed linen uh, table tablecloth, um, very timeless and classic. But then we added in these beautiful scalloped edged um, placemats. They've got a lovely raised beading to them and we added these lovely uh, matching napkins. We tied them with um, silver napkin rings, which matched with the bone um, white 
silver in the cutlery. And then these very, very simple florals because it's quite an elegant formal setting. We kind of wanted to tone it down. Um, these florals are by Rob Van Helden. Um, really, really sweet, really simple. We added a cut glass, um, crystal wine glass as well, just to give it that wedding feel. And again, these swirl candles, but this time in a very pale green. Um, we love this setting. It's really chic and elegant and feminine um, and a beautiful color palette. We hope you've enjoyed watching our tips and trends for this summer. We hope you have a gorgeous day and we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Hi Sherlux, I'm Hannah Martin, I'm a makeup artist. So today I'm going to share with you three of my very favourite bridal looks using some gorgeous products from Armani Beauty. The first look I'm going to share with you is a very classic um, English rose look which will be predominantly fairly soft, fairly relaxed and actually timeless. Now the most important thing when it comes to bridal makeup is acing that base. And I'm going to use something of a makeup artist's best kept secret, and that is the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. Now, before I start with the foundation, I'm just going to prep my skin first with the Armani Beauty Prima Serum. So it's really important on your wedding day that your skin is perfectly hydrated before makeup, so your makeup looks as natural and skin-like as possible. Okay, now into some Armani Luminous Silk Primer, which is again, it's just kind of building on the hydration from the serum. Now I'm gonna go into my Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. At the moment, I'm shade 5.75. So I'm gonna do two pumps into the palm of my hand, which will be plenty. I'm just starting at the center of the face and blending out. Now all of the great technology that's in the Luminous Silk Foundation, they have put into the Luminous Silk Concealer. So this is the shade 4.5. And for all brides, it is imperative that the under eye area is corrected and brightened. So I'm just taking some of that concealer right the way under my eyes. And then I'm just gonna use my ring finger to press that luminous silk concealer into the skin. There we go, look at that lift. I mean, I think it's looking pretty good, but I'd probably just do a tiny bit across the front of the cheek and a little bit around my mouth and chin, just to make sure that there is adequate coverage. Next step, I'm gonna do a tiny bit of a contour, and that's really important for brides, if possible, to do as much layering of product first with creams instead of powders because we don't want skin at any point to look overdone or heavy. We want your bridal makeup to look as fresh as possible. And that's why with my clients, I always try and layer as many cream-based products as possible, even on my clients with oilier skin. Then just going back into the foundation brush and blending. Now you can add more if you so wish. I'm just doing a bit in the classic areas and I've done a little, ever so slightly, just down the sides of my nose. Now it's time to set that foundation. I'm going to use the beautiful Armani Luminous Silk powder. So I'm going to take a bit on the brush and I'm just going to focus it through my T-zone. Okay, now I do want to warm my skin a little bit and I'm actually going to use the Armani Luminous Silk powder again, just in a warmer shade. So this is the shade number eight and just further warm through the top of my forehead. Remember on your wedding day, if you're wearing a light color from head to toe, actually that can be quite draining. So you do want to do adequate warmth to the skin. And then to finish my base, I'm going to use a little bit of A blush, and this is in the shade 50. 
I'm just gonna finish with a little bit of highlight powder as well. This is the A Highlight. I'm just gonna take that over the higher points of my cheek and blend immediately. Now to brows. Brows are so important for framing the face. So I'm going to start with the Armani Beauty Eye and Brow Maestro. This is the number four. And I'm just using an angled brush. And all I'm going to do is just fluff the product through the brows, following the direction of the growth of my hairs. Now the brows are in place, it's time to move on to eyes. And I'm going to start with some of the Armani Beauty Eye Tint, and this is the shade 44. And I'm just gonna blend that with my ring finger, making sure I pull the tint up through the crease of the eye. Then to add a little bit of definition, I'm actually going to use the Avant Premier eyeshadow palette. I'm just gonna go into the darkest color and I'm just gonna very gently line the eyes. So I'm gonna blend that all along the lash line and almost pulling up the lid slightly to blend it into the shadow for a soft, romantic, almost ethereal looking eyeliner. I'm going to take just a little bit of the slightly lighter bronzy brown just along my lower lash line. You don't need to line your lower lash line with a colour anywhere near as deep. I've already curled my eyelashes so now it's just time for a bit of mascara. I'm using the black Ecstasy and you'll see how instantly that bit of mascara just finishes the eye look. Now for a bit of lip, I'm gonna use the Rouge Dalmani Matte. This is the shade 500. And it's just a beautiful, soft, rosy pink. However, if you prefer a liquid, I've just got to show you quickly the Lip Maestro. This is the shade 523, as I love this also. So there we have it, the first of my three looks, a classic, timeless English Rose bridal makeup look created using Armani Beauty. For the second of my bridal makeup looks today, I'm going to be showing you a beachy, bronzed, destination bridal kind of makeup look. So let me just add a bit of that sunkissed glow First, by using some of the Fluid Sheer. This is the shade 11. I'm just gonna start brushing, oh, I love it, over the top of my cheeks. And then just to be um, cautious, I'm gonna use my ring finger just to pat the edges. Now for my cheek, I've got that rose gold glow. I'm slightly obsessed with it from the Fluid Sheer. But I'm actually gonna add some of the A Blush this is the shade 30 for a soft, slightly more fresh, peachy glow. Because I think with a tan and with a bronze eye, this really is so complimentary. Now for eyes, I'm going to start again with an Armani eye tint. This is the shade 41. Now, I'm not putting it on neatly to start with. Don't panic, that's totally fine. You just want to get it onto the skin and just gently blend that pigment all over the lid and up through the crease of the eye. And then always be sure to blend so you can't really see where that colour starts or where it finishes. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the same bronze. I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand first and then with a softer brush, I'm just gonna sweep some of that along my lower lashes. So right under the lash line there. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of one of the Eyes to Kill Stella pots. This is shade six, and it's a light, bright, um, goldy white shade. And I'm just gonna, with my ring finger, pop some of that into the inner corner of my eye. 
And then I'm actually going to use a little bit of the Icicle Stella number three and just blend a little bit of that along the lower lid to add a little bit of definition to the look. But again, because we're going for a bronzy, smoky, sultry look, I don't want to do anything too hard. Then for lip, I've chosen the Rouge Darmani Matte. This is the shade 102. And it's just an understated neutral. I'm gonna use a little bit of lip pencil. This is the shade two. So there we have it, my bronzed destination bridal makeup look using some of my favorites from Armani Beauty. For the third of my bridal makeup looks today, I'm going to do an evening soft bridal makeup look. So I'm gonna start with an eye tint. This is the shade 24 and it's kind of a neutral, slightly mushroomy color. But I do just want to neutralize and mattify my lid first. Just blend that matte shade all over the lid. I'm going to take a second tint. This is the shade 39 and focus it mainly on my lower lid. I'll do one eye at a time and then just blend into my lid, pulling it up towards the crease. Now going into the Avant Premier Eyeshadow Palette, I'm gonna go into the darkest color as I did earlier to create a line. I'm gonna really make sure I blend the shadow color into my brush. I'm gonna sweep that through the crease of the eye just to further pull some of that darker colour that little bit higher. Then using my Armani brush I'm going to go back into that same colour, blend it with the slightly lighter shade and sweep that along the lower lashes. Now for extra definition, I'm gonna use some of the Eyes to Kill eyeliner. I'm gonna slick that all the way along my lash line to really intensify the color right at the root of the lashes. Now this definitely needs a little bit more mascara, doesn't it? There we go, a soft, neutral, matte, smoky eye for an evening understated glam bridal look. And I'm gonna finish that with the Lip Maestro in shade 213, which is slightly more it's slightly deeper than the other lips I've gone for today, but I think you can do that when you're doing an understated evening bridal look, don't you think? And there we go. Here is my understated evening bridal makeup look using lots of my favourites from Armani Beauty. Welcome back. Thank you, Hannah. They really were all gorgeous. Coming up shortly, Charlotte will be here talking us through the latest new bridal products and launches. But first, friend of the show and London's coolest florist, Ronnie Colby, is here to reveal what's hot in floral trends for summer 2021. Hi guys, I'm Ronnie Colby. Welcome to my flower shop and wedding studio here in Balham, London. Today we are here to discuss all things wedding trends for 2021 and what's hot and what's not. So first up, we're gonna talk about varieties. Um, 
if you had had a, a wedding planned abroad and you're having to have your wedding here in the UK, which isn't a bad thing, you know, it's important to kind of keep the surroundings in mind when planning your wedding flowers. And with that, we're finding the trend to revert back to tradition. And with English tradition, everything is really relaxed, it's understated, it's not ostentatious. Um, and, you know, we're finding that you know, traditional English flowers are becoming more in fashion. So Victorian scabiosa, for example, or Gelda viburnum, or delphiniums, or helleborus. Um, and those flowers are delicate, sweet, but also can provide a statement without being too showy offy. And the second trend we're going to discuss this year is colour. So every year there's a colour, you know, whether that's pink or blush or grey or whatever. But, you know, in 2021, it's all about being perfectly imperfect. And there is no specific colour palette. And with English traditional flowers, you can mix colours and, you know, you can use that kind of garden as your inspiration and have splashes of yellow and pink and blues. And it's about being relaxed. And a lot of your guests haven't been to a wedding or to any kind of environment where there's lots of people for a long period of time. So it's really important that when they come to your wedding, you're creating an air of relaxation for them. And the third and last kind of trend that we're going to discuss is the ceremony installations. Everyone now is investing quite a lot of their budget into the ceremony. It's been a year of kind of unrest for people, like I've said. So, you know, the most important thing to a wedding now is the happiness that a couple is experiencing. And the ceremony is like such an important part of that wedding, where a lot of people used to take that budget and put it into the evening reception. A lot of people are now taking that budget and investing it in the ceremony. So we're seeing lots of arches, lots of backdrops with shutter boards and creating lots of layers and emphasizing any kind of form of happiness inside the ceremony. So, you know, again, go with that English theme, keep it relaxed, circle arches, full arches, backdrops, whatever you want. You know, just make the ceremony really important because that's what people are going to remember. We look forward to working with so many of you. Take care. Bye. From dresses to accessories, just because weddings are on pause, it doesn't mean wedding fashion is too. Charlotte's here to tell us what is hot for brides in 2021. Hello. Hi. How are you? Well, this is as close as we've been in a long time. It's nice to be back with more than one person. I know, it's really nice, isn't it? it and is. it's nice to be giving the wedding industry a bit of love. Yeah. Because yeah. it's been a shitty year. It has, but some glimmer of hope as of now, hopefully yeah. for later in the year. So, fingers crossed. Everybody. Okay, start us off. What's new and exciting in the world of wedding fashion? So, obviously, we had to talk about Rixo, who have launched bridal wear for the first time. They've been a favourite for wedding guest dresses for a really long time. They do great, colourful, going out dresses. Um, and, yeah, they have just launched bridal for the first time. So, this is a 26-piece capsule collection. 26? Yeah. Can I just say, it amazes me the volume of designs mm. in their ready-to-wear that they bring out. Yeah every season it's not it? they are constantly evolving and yeah. recreating and actually the bridal collection is a testament to that because every design is so different there's something super feminine there's something sexy there's something vintage inspired yeah, something there's 50, yeah, 50, yeah a little bit for everybody there's accessories as well and you know it's really part of this trend for more affordable brands mm. what is the pricing so it? it starts at 295 oh, and goes yeah. up to 1450 so it's not cheap but, you know, compared to what you'd be paying for, a, you know, a traditional bridal designer, it's a lot more affordable. And if you're doing a registry office and a small wedding, totally. you might have decided not to spend the money. And I think lots of brides are still spending lots of money on yeah. their dresses, even if they're having a smaller wedding. But, you know, you might just decide to get married quicker, not totally. to save lots of money, and actually how brilliant that you can get a dress for that yeah. price. Yeah, and how fun, if you, you know, if you have had to scale back, do something smaller, then how fun to do something a bit different and to not feel like you have to go for a conventional yeah big white dress yeah. so definitely want to check out there's accessories in there as well so yeah and also they're due to open a store once they can just for bridal too Ooh. I know so very exciting Fab. Um, another launch now slightly more luxury this time Erdem who is obviously a very highly esteemed British designer has also launched bridal wear has, for the first has time. he not done bridal wear up he until now not, that kind of blows my mind he should have right? I know totally I mean for it's those taking you so long exactly and for those who don't know you know all his designs are so feminine so ethereal so beautiful so as you say, it's a natural fit. Um, it's also not going to be super high end. It's obviously expensive, but um, it's all off the rack. It's ready to wear. So it's not a kind of bespoke bridal service in a you know 
they're a Couture wang kind of way. Kind Couture of way. way. No, you will just be able to buy it as part of the ready-to-wear collection. Do you? It is beautiful. I had a sneak peek at some pictures before we came on, and it is just so like demure, mm -hmm. but de feminine, yeah. and de uh, it's just just what you'd expect. Exactly. It's super romantic, but you know it, the beauty of his designs is that they feel very kind of English country garden. But yes. then also, if you're lucky enough to be able to do a wedding on the beach, it kind of works there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, it works I for uh, I mean, dare I ask pricing? Dear pricing. Sorry. A lot. A lot. Yeah. Four figures. Expensive, yeah. Won't be cheap, but yes. you know, it's your wedding dress. We've and given you Rixo, so now exactly. we're giving you a day. <laughs> Bit of balance. Another designer launched. This time is a brand who isn't new. Her name is Valentine Avo. She's a Belgian designer, but she's just launched on Moda Operandi, which, as we know, is a platform that gives, you know, so many slightly lesser known designers mm. a bit of a platform. Um, her designs are so beautiful. She, I mean, she really knows what she's doing. She cut her teeth at McQueen. She launched her label in 2017 and uses mm. all, you know, she uses silk, French lace, feathers, all these different creative materials to make contemporary bridal wear. Stunning. It's totally, totally stunning. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Amazing. amazing. I, I'm sure that, that also comes with quite a big price tag. But, it does. Um, <laughs> the, you know, you only get married once. Exactly. So you and, go for it. And also, isn't it cool that you can buy bridal wear on the internet now? I'm sure yeah. coronavirus will have changed people's shopping habits in terms of bridal wear. And mm. yeah, one to definitely check out. And Moda have a really good selection of bridal wear too. Okay, next. Um, let's talk about a service now. Obviously, the pandemic has made shopping for bridal dresses incredibly difficult. Um, and if you are still plowing on and looking for a dress for later in the year, if your wedding can go ahead, it's, you know, you're, you're kind of pushing things, aren't you? Because often there's a six month lead time. So mm. Bon Bride is uh, the site bon to know. Bon Bride? Bon, yeah, is that the girl who set it up? Her name is Pippa Cook. She was a buyer for Harrods, for House of Hackney, for Topshop. So she's a British bridal designer um, and she's now offering a service where you can order five dresses, up to five dresses from her, try them on at home. You pay a 10% deposit for the dresses, which you obviously get back once you return the dresses and you can keep them for five days. So you can try them on, see what you like. If you don't like any of them, that's fine. You can send them all back, get your money back. And if you like one, then she can work with you to, to tailor but it. But are you getting a really big sample size? Because the beauty, sorry to, you know, be a killjoy here, but the beauty of trying on wedding dresses is having them clip them to you in all the right places. Yeah. Can they bring them to your house? Yeah, can, somebody, somebody, can someone come a person to Look, no, it's not ideal, in. is it? But also, you know, for so many, obviously they clip it all for you, but for so many people, it's also yeah. like, you know, that, that can be pretty stressful too, can't yeah. it? Going in and yeah. having eyes on you. So actually, to be able to do yes. it from the privacy of your own I think home, hot flushes is something. I, when like, I think yeah. about it, it yeah, literally <laughs> gives me anxiety. Um, so yeah, I think to be able to do that at home. No, I'm, yeah, clever. Know, yeah, flattering lighting and all that yeah. as well. Um, so yeah, definitely a service. Get to some check out. bulldog clips. Yes. Good idea. Big ones. And, and the shoes that you would wear on your wedding day as yes. well. Be the yes, best. good tip. An accessory. Now, these are, I'm going to reach down, these masks are from A1 Golding, who is a hat designer. Astute behind the scenes fans will remember that Rich and I actually went to her studio just before the pandemic hit. Um, she tried, we tried on some incredible hats there. Um, I mean, incredible. Can we just stop for a moment? Mm. The most incredible yeah, hats. no, like, amazing. I feel so, so deeply for milliners because you know their entire industry has yeah. just gone quiet hasn't yeah. it so but she when when events come back and hats come back just have a look yeah buy a hat i, yeah. I, I probably buy a wouldn't wear it to hat work before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly you'll see me hosting the show in a hat next week um so <laughs> well, fun. Can she, we do that? yeah definitely <laughs> she does as well as doing you know beautiful hats for for events for for ascot whatever she also makes she has always had a bridal range um so that has been slightly pivoted, like so many things, and uh -huh. she's launched these bridal masks. She actually launched these last year, but I thought we couldn't talk about what's hot in bridal without giving these a mention because they are just so gorgeous. You know, people still having civil ceremonies and things like that obviously need to have yeah. a mask on hand. So there's this design with the bows, which I just love. You know, if you're having a very chic swept love up it. bun or something, just gorgeous. Could there's, do the steam, but I, yeah. I do. <laughs> Oh, there's no. this as well. I mean, how stunning is that? Which obviously That's you could amazing. tie into bows as well. I think it's so pretty. And then there's also another one with a little flower design on the oh. side too. So, you know, even in the time of a pandemic, you can still accessorize well, can't you? Stunning. Love them. Yeah, so they are gorgeous. Love them. They're available on her site. Something for your honeymoon now. Bit of a pipe dream perhaps, but actually there, there will be honeymoons again. They will, will be back. They will. will. Um, so this is Sleeper, who is a brand we talk about all the time. They're a Ukrainian resort wear label and they have always Resort wear nightwear. Resort wear slash nightwear because that's exactly it. They do linen pieces that you can wear and, and the pyjamas that everyone will remember with the 
Feathered. Yes, exactly. That's Feathered. Said. Ostrich, it, what are they? Marabou. Yeah. Fluffy. Whatever. Fluffy stuff. That you've seen their designs around and they have just launched another bridal wear collection. They've done bridal pieces, bridal nightwear for a while. Um, these are slightly more resorty. They are night dresses, but as we say, perfect over a swimsuit or, you know, mm. the day you're getting ready. I actually wore a sleeper dress as I got ready for my wedding. because did they're, I did, yeah, because they're so lightweight. They're lovely, they're linen, they have little, you know, gorgeous trimming. Um, and yeah, they are really feminine and special. I mean, barefoot on white sand yeah. with one of those, I mean, yeah, a perfect. girl can dream, right? Yeah, I mean, one day, fingers <laughs> crossed. Um, but you know, they're, they're a bit of an investment, but you will wear them. Yeah, you know, they're not specifically bridal. You can wear them for holidays to come. Yeah. Um, another lingerie brand now. This is Shh Milano and this is a brand What's that it called? it's called Shh Milano. S <laughs> H H Milano. Um, it's obviously an Italian brand. We discovered it on Luisa Via Roma and they make the most gorgeous knicker and bra sets. They are there's specifically a bridal collection. They've got cute little slogans in blue embroidery um, and probably not something to wear on your wedding day because you'll probably see it through your dress. But again, perfect for your wedding look for, again, hopefully a mini moon or honeymoon of some sort. Or Can you have it bespoke embroidered? I think you can, yes. Oh, so nice. they're so they're so sweet. I mean, your wedding is the time to go all out and buy a really expensive night dress yeah. and personalized underwear 100%. and, you know, everything else. You also, you know, hopefully you only get to do it once. So all yeah. these fun things that you love, just do it. Yeah. Buy them all, you'll wear them. It's a pair of knickers, you'll wear them again. Personalized and gorgeous. wellies, umbrellas. Yeah, a just, lot. You know, Merch your wedding. Zinc. Exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, they um, you can buy them from their own site as well. It's 30 pounds a pair, so something fun. Nice. Exactly. Really nice present. I was about to say. For a bride on her hand yes, as well. Yes, exactly. Or bridesmaids gifts. Yeah. Yeah, really nice. Um, some jewelry now. This is Mizuki, which is a Japanese New York label um they're not new but we had to give a shout out to their gorgeous pearl jewelry that's mm. kind of her look she always infuses these really dainty gold pieces with you know freshwater pearls some slightly more classic some slightly more modern um, but there is a new collection full of really dainty pieces we're seeing pearls coming back in a big way in bridal fashion you know again less but of the slightly a trad thing yeah in a, in a contemporary way which is just fresh and exactly modern and not like yeah. yeah, 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 not not classic. Yeah. Um, but this is the <laughs> brand, yeah, in a really good way. And this is the brand to go to for that look. So whether it's one earring that's long and thin and dainty or whether it's a pretty necklace, this is the brand to know. Again, mm. investment pieces, but you'll wear them again and again. Beautiful, yeah, yeah. really beautiful. Exactly. So there we go, that's me. Thank you, Charlotte. I want to get married all over again. My <laughs> husband better behave. Otherwise, I'm going to trade him in, do it all over again and wear Rick's so word. Uh, that was great, thank you. Thank you. That's almost it for today. Before we finish, I want to give a very big thank you to our partner on the show today, to Giorgio Armani. You've seen their makeup in use by Hannah Martin. And Charlotte, I know that you wore their foundation on your own wedding day. Um, so anyway, it gets a big thumbs up from us and by lots of pros in the industry. I also wanted to give a shout out to the launch of their new fragrance, which is the C Eau de Parfum Intense. Um, edition that is on counters now. It's a new launch. It's a more intense version of the original C fragrance, which is one of the best selling fragrances in the UK. And I think it's a really great option for a bride. Lots of people choose a very light floral fragrance. I like something with a bit, bit more strength. Yeah. Bit sexier. Yeah, yeah, definitely a bit sexier. Mm. And I think this is it. I, I feel like you'll recognize yeah, it um, when I spray it. I also love the bottle. It's a gorgeous bottle. It's pretty yeah. chic, isn't it? Really chic. And um, it's got notes of black currant. I love black currant in my fragrance. Direction. Black currant, rose, oh, I love it. patchouli. Patchouli to me is yeah. like a secret weapon in fragrances. And it's really elegant yeah. and yeah, it's there's a kind of it's romantic and sexy, but yeah, it's still really feminine. I'm I sophisticated. Yeah, really sophisticated. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. So nice. Anyway, if you're in the market for a wedding fragrance or you just want a really nice new fragrance, then check it out. It's available now, um, and yeah, it gets a big thumbs up for me. In fact, it, it is right up my street. Anyway, as I said, thank you to Giorgio Armani, and that really is. It for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching. I hope we've inspired brides to be. Thank you to our wonderful guests, to Sarah, to Louisa, to Hannah, to Ronnie. Uh, on the next show, Charlotte will be back with a very exciting designer unboxing with Lou. Uh, also, interior designer Roxy Zeman will be showing us her stylish home. 
plus Katie Miller is back with her next instalment of her bar workout series and this time it's focusing on the lower body plus Becky Hull will be here and lots more in the meantime we would love it if you could leave us a comment below give us a thumbs up and do subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet have a wonderful day wherever you are bye bye